We hear a lot about overfishing the ocean, but occasionally, fishing is the solution to the problems facing the seas. This is Academy scientist Luis Rocha, catching lionfish in the Caribbean. Lionfish are invasive in the region and are munching up the local fishes, endangering several species. Invasive species is a term that scientists use to describe species that are not what they're supposed to be. They were transported from one place to another by humans and then introduced in a habitat where they didn't belong. Lionfish are a predator and they're not native to the Caribbean, so species in the Caribbean don't recognize them as a predator. So a lot of species in the Caribbean are suffering and many of the species that the lionfish are eating, they do have critical roles in the ecosystem. What we can do is control them. We can keep their numbers down and give the native fish of the Caribbean a chance to survive. The Caribbean fish, they will adapt to them. They will learn that they are a predator. In a lot of places, they are catching them just to try to keep their numbers down for a while. And this is having an impact because uh, people are going out more and more trying to spear them and selling them to places where they get distributed to the whole country and sold in big numbers. I'll take an order of lionfish sushi, please. Pass the lionfish tacos, please. Lionfish aren't the only invasive species causing trouble in the ocean. Some species of fish, mollusks, plants, and more wreak havoc throughout the world's marine ecosystems. Most of these organisms get to new locations by ship, not in a comfy cabin, but in the ballast water ships carried in their holes to keep the boats stable. Vessels take on this water, bringing life forms on board, and discharge it in different ports with the liquid. In fact, many governmental organizations now have strict regulations about ballast water exchange. Some requirements mean that ships have to exchange their water in the middle of the ocean, where life would have a harder time taking hold. Some are working to treat ballast water to make sure invasives can't hitch a ride. Other regions are monitoring their waterways so that if non-native species do arrive, they can't successfully take over an ecosystem. Here's another solution to invasive species and other threats facing the oceans, marine protected areas. Marine protected areas, or MPAs as they're called, can protect portions of the ocean for fish, birds, other animals, and even humans. Some are established and run by countries, others by states, and some are even protected by local communities, like this MPA in the Philippines, where the local people are protecting their coastline from overfishing, including dynamite fishing. Can I go to an MPA and swim, or is it just for the fish? It differs by the location. In some places, you can't swim or fish at all. Others are more open to fishing and even ecotourism. Marine protected areas are very diverse around the world. They can be a no-take area, or they could be an area that is a, a managed marine protected area in which you can still fish, but it's managed so that there's as much sustainability incorporated as possible so it can remain a healthy, functioning ecosystem. In the United States, 41% of U.S. waters are under some type of protection. The one problem with marine protected areas is that there's simply just not enough. They only protect around 4% of the world's oceans. And scientists estimate that to protect marine life, we're going to need a lot more. Look at me, I'm saving the ocean right now. Well, you're certainly making your neighbors happy by picking that up, but I'm not really sure you're helping save the ocean. Actually, she's right. One of the biggest threats to ocean health is nutrient pollution, caused by fertilizers, sewage treatment, and even pet waste. But nutrients sound like a good thing. They are, up to a certain point, but too much runoff of nitrogen and phosphorus into the ocean can cause areas known as dead zones. When water carries these nutrients from farmlands or urban settings into waterways that run into the ocean, the nitrogen and phosphorus may cause algae to bloom. Now many small ocean animals eat this algae, but when there's just too much of it, the animals can't keep up. As the algae die and sink to the seafloor, they decompose, which uses up most or all of the oxygen in the water, causing dead zones. At 7,000 square miles in area, about the size of New Jersey, one of the largest dead zones is where the Mississippi River feeds into the Gulf of Mexico. Overuse of fertilizers from farmlands all along the Mississippi River contribute to this dead zone. If farmers use fertilizers more efficiently, it could go a long way to help solve this issue. I can't believe using something here affects the ocean over there. That's why no matter where we live, we should make sure these things don't end up in the ocean. We can all do our part. 
Local actions have global impacts.